Hey there friends and fellow makers, welcome to the shop. You've got Bill here for a quick one back in the shop. I wanna talk about a tool so important, so critical that I use so frequently that I've installed a very expensive one right here on my main workbench. I use this thing every day. This is my Fordham rotary tool. There's a foot pedal down here so I can control it at a moment's notice. Now, of course, this is the really expensive one, but I wanna talk about every type of rotary tool. Very simple, it's a motor that spins a bit that you use to change the work that you're working on. This here's a pretty common cheap model. They're all pretty fantastic. Uh, they do the same thing as the expensive model. This just has a flexible shaft that goes to the, the motor. Uh, this fella here does everything you need it to do. You can lock it to change the bits to different sizes or shapes. We'll get into those in a minute. Uh, and then this guy has this fancy chuck so it can accept different sized shanks like that. But like I said, they both do the same work. This one just has some fancy features like you can remove and replace this hand piece super quickly and easily. Just like so. Also, it has a foot pedal for speed control and a giant motor that you can put in forward or backward. These power tools do send a lot of material up into the air and frequently towards your face. So there's a bunch of safety precautions you're gonna wanna take. First of all, eyeballs. You shoot a shard of plastic into your eye, it could do permanent damage or at the very least be really irritating. So you want to have some form of eye protection. I have prescription uh, safety goggles because I'm a fancy man. Normal glasses are usually enough, but how many times have you hit something and the dust goes right under the lenses, right into your eye? Safety glasses are a must. Of course, if you're kicking dust in the air, any kind of dust, you wanna protect your lungs. Uh, I use a respirator for pretty much everything because I have it here all the time, but a dust mask is critical when you use one of these fellows. And if things are getting crazy, you're shooting sparks and uh, all kinds of sharp stuff towards your face or, I don't know, glitter. This is what you want, some sort of face shield that protects your entire face from flying debris. Frequently, I will have all of this stuff on just because I don't wanna hurt myself. Speaking of dust, kick up a lot of dust in the air, you want to get it out of the air. I like using my dust collector, but if you have a shop vac that's just as good, you wanna work near that thing so that the dust coming off of your rotary tool gets sucked right into it. One of the reasons why I recommend every prop and costume maker get a rotary tool is because they work on so many different materials. Obviously, we use them on a ton of foam, mostly for shaping and uh, sculpting on EVA foam but I also use it for shaping and sculpting and cutting plastic. This is a foamed PVC that's really great for prop making and the rotary tool and the different bits do a great job on this. Uh, and then a thin sheets of acrylic, especially things like visors uh, or PETG, anything like that, those can be cut with your rotary tool really, really well. Uh, trying to cut something like this uh, with a saw, super pain in the butt but you can get really creative with the rotary tool. Obviously, great on wood, although I don't use a ton of wood, but when I do, for example, the Samaritan uh, grips, those are all sculpted pretty much with a rotary tool. Uh, and then resin, so this is a urethane resin kit. These things need cleanup when they come out of the mold. This one in particular has some pretty rough spots, and I always use a rotary tool to go in and do that fine cleanup work. The reason a rotary tool is so useful and versatile is because you can swap out the bits and accessories. In fact, most of them come with some kind of collection of all the different varieties that you can use. I recommend getting one of these and just trying everything out with all the different materials you have and see what works best for you. Now, of course, I have some favorites that I'd like to show you. The bits that get the most action in my shop are, of course, sanding drums, sanding bits. This is a flappy one that I use every once in a while when I need to remove a lot of material, say, on the inside of a slush cast mask or something. But these ones get the most use. You could tell these things are super beat up, but they're useful for so many different materials. I get them in a variety of grits. This is, I believe, 100 and 200. This one, who knows? Uh, these get tons of use every single day, and I always keep them well stocked. 
My next favorite batch of bits are cut off wheels. These are uh, so useful for cutting thin material, especially this is a fiberglass one. I prefer the fiberglass to the ceramic ones because they tend to explode. Uh, just a little pricier. This is also a really good bit, although dangerous, just a sharp buzzsaw pretty much. Uh, but I do like using it because it is very efficient at cutting through material. I especially like using these for cutting out visors or cutting the flashing off of uh, anything that's been vacuum formed or resin cast. Next up are all the grinding bits. These guys here, I actually use mostly on foam, believe it or not. They're beat up enough that when you run them on foam, it makes the surface nice and shiny. So those are meant for something else, but I absolutely use them on foam. These are for more smaller detailed grinding uh, or etching in a lot of cases. Uh, in fact, this little round bit here can be used to etch something into plastic to make it look like a data pad or something. The last batch are my cutting tools, and I use these whenever I need to remove a lot of material efficiently. Uh, though you do have to be careful, this guy's magnetized. You have to be careful, these are aggressive and they can grab onto soft material and kind of run the tool with it. In fact, this guy right here, I did that when I was making the grip on the Samaritan and sort of choo-choo trained this over a couple of fingers, which didn't feel very good. So you definitely want to be careful with these, but they're amazing when you need to remove a lot of material quickly. There are of course countless other rotary tool bits. You may have a favorite, and if you do, or if I miss something really good, please let me know down in the comments, and share it with everyone else. Uh, there is one more technique I wanna share with you because it's really good and super useful. You can use your power drill or a drill press or any other spinning bit with a chuck in it to basically replicate a lathe. So I'm gonna take a piece of wood and chuck it up in here and I can spin it and then use my rotary tool to do all the work. <laughs> didn't really make anything, but that's how that works. That's just about it for all of my rotary tool knowledge. Of course, we'll have links down below to the tools that we like to use, and I'm excited to hear about any uh, bits that I don't have in my collection that you think I need. Thank you so much for watching and following along. Hopefully I've inspired you to potentially add a new tool to your collection that's going to unlock a world of possibilities. Uh, that'll do it for us in the shop this week. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. And we will see you real soon, I promise, with more prop and costume making goodness.